We are afraid. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Today we are looking at the word titled Upon Mount Zion. Can somebody shout it out? Upon Mount Zion. Most times when you allow pastors to pray and you give them the info of the topic or the scripture, they will use time to preach your message while praying. And you will be wondering that when you come back, when you come on stage, what would you say? I believe that the Holy Spirit will speak. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Usually, amen. I don't know. I, I don't know if some of us have our hymns. I like to sing this song. My hope is built on nothingness, but Jesus Christ. Brother, Echo, sing it for us. Please sing it. Christ the solid rock I stand, as the chorus I like. He sinking sand, yes. He sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground. Is sinking sound all the ground is sinking sound. As you stay on Mount Zion tonight, you will not think in Jesus' name. Mount Zion is a mountain and is a rock, and it is reliable. Mount Zion is the house of the Lord. Mount Zion is the presence of the Lord. Mount Zion is the temple of God. Mount Zion is the abode of the children of God. The Bible says in Obadiah chapter 1 verse 17 and 8, it says, but upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. You and I have come to Mount Zion tonight. We will surely get our deliverance in Jesus' name. It says there shall be holiness. Holiness is very key. And the house of Linda Lakenfa shall possess their possession. And the house of Tara Lakenfa shall be a fire and the house of Linda Lakenfa shall be a flame. And the house of our enemies shall be stubbles, and they shall kindle in them. We shall devour our enemies. There shall not be any one of them remaining in the house of our enemies. For the Lord has spoken it, and so shall it be. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jeremiah 15, 21 says, Hear me, hear the promises of God. Jeremiah 15, 21 says, That I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked, and I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. Tonight I want you to pray and say, Father, I thank you because you said you would deliver me out of the hand of the wicked. Thank you because you will redeem me out of the hand of the terrible. Lord Jesus, I say thank you. Begin to thank the Lord. Lord, I thank you. You will redeem me. Deliver me and my family out of the hand of the wicked. Redeem also God from the hand of the terrible. Lord, deliver me tonight. Take away every form of darkness from me. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. 
Now, I want you to know that Mount Zion represents deliverance. Mount Zion represents the house of God. And whenever you come to a true place where the Lord is worshipped, you should expect deliverance. And then you should expect to live only after you have been delivered. And when your holiness is complete, the Holy Spirit will now restore to you all your possessions that the enemy has stolen away. The house of Jacob shall be fire. Now, after you have, been you have given your life to Jesus Christ, you have been delivered, you are now living a life of holiness, and then you have been restored, all the enemy stole from you. God expects you to be a fire. God expects you to be a flame of fire. You cannot afford to go back to your sins or your old ways, and you cannot afford to live unrighteous. So God expects you to be fire. So whenever the enemy comes near you, you are expected to devour the enemy. And I pray that tonight, the grace of God that will cause you to devour, let it come upon you now, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it come upon you now, in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' name. I'd like us to ask ourselves, why is a believer oppressed? A believer who is a child of God who has come to Mount Zion, why are we often oppressed? Why do we go for deliverance? What is this supposed to mean? Being upon Mount Zion, why do you come for deliverance and holiness? And then at the end of the day, they get possessed again. Zion represents a fortified city. It's a hill where the Jebusites used to stay. It's a stronghold. Before the Israelites came to Jerusalem, And so over time, whenever they needed a place of refuge, when David needed a place of strength, he was often found at that hill called Mount Zion. He was often found at the place of the Lord. And God told us something, that he would give Mount Zion a new name. It will also give Mount Zion a new place. And I won't want to bust with scriptures tonight because I want to be fast. A lot of prayers we will pray tonight. Zion for you and I who are children of God is your place of power. That place where you retreat for strength. That place where the presence of God is. It's also your place of deliverance where you go to God and declare your vulnerability and you ask God to cover you afresh, just like the eagle who goes to hide and shed everything and then build up and come back again. Zion is a place of authority where you take authority over the enemies, just like the Lord told us in Jeremiah 15 verse 21. Zion can be called, like I told you, the city of God or the city of David. But you know the truth about it is that a lot of us as believers come to Zion and yet we are sleeping. Some of us are already snoring into the foam. We come to Zion, we don't take the, the presence of God very serious. Why do we miss Zion? Why do we miss all the goodies in Zion? Why do we miss our miracle in Zion? But I pray for you under the sound of my voice tonight that you will not be at ease in Zion. 
and that your miracle will locate you speedily in the mighty name of Jesus. Number four, another reason why Zion don't favor a lot of people, because every day we come on Tuesday to pray, the Yorubas call it Ojoy Shago, means the day of victory. Tuesday is the day of victory. So anytime we come before the Lord, we come to claim our victory. But if we don't get victory, it must be out of one or, one or two of these reasons that I am mentioning. So it's good you examine yourself. Is your case the type that don't mix, you don't believe it and you don't mix it with faith? Hebrews 4 2. Or your own case is the one in 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 24, that you want to give God what does not cost you anything. Or you are Amos chapter 6, verse 1. That is at ease in Zion. You are prayerless and you use flesh all the time. You are not spiritual. Or are you this fourth person that I want to talk about in Psalm 137? Say, by the river of Babylon, where we sat down, and where we were. They remember Zion. They remember Zion, but they are in Babylon. And they say they cannot sing the Lord's song in captivity. So are you coming to Zion? Are you a member of Zion, yet you are in a known captivity? Babylon was captivity for the children of Israel. That habit of stealing and thinking that nobody sees you is a captivity. That habit of lying and thinking that nobody knows is a form of captivity. That habit of going to your toilet to masturbate is another form of captivity. That habit of enjoying sex in your dream and saying that you have no control over it is another form of captivity. Pray. Divorce the spirit husband and be free. It's a dirty habit. That habit of not even paying your tithe, disobeying and thinking that nobody sees you, is another form of captivity. There are several forms of captivity, but I pray for you tonight that the Almighty God will deliver you from every form of captivity and bring you out of Babylon in the mighty name of Jesus. Then and only then will you be able to sing the Lord's song and you'll be able to remember the Lord's song. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. There are four major aspects we need deliverance as children of God. You need deliverance from sin. Everybody needs deliverance from sin. We also need deliverance from the flesh. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Then we need deliverance from trouble. Hear me. Some people need deliverance from their flesh. They have some habits that they want to do without. Some deliverance from flesh. Some of you pay attention more to your stomach. More they say fast. You will say, I cannot fast. And you will be promoting also. And be prophesying also. You need deliverance from that flesh. Some of us will spend three hours baiting. We cannot spend one hour reading the Bible. You need deliverance from that flesh. You need deliverance from sin, known and unknown sin, secret sin. The things you indulge in, may the Lord help us in Jesus' name. The things you will not do when your pastor is there, and the things you will willingly do when they are not there. May the Lord help us and take away pretense from our life in Jesus' name. The third form of deliverance we need, we all need deliverance from trouble. Nobody prays for trouble, but sometimes trouble just come. We need deliverance from trouble. We also need deliverance from demons. That one is the most one that most Christians fight over, and I wonder why. I pray that the Lord will deliver us. Listen to me. Why am I telling you the areas where you need deliverance? It is because in Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. And if you are a member of Zion, 
you are still struggling with sin, struggling with flesh, struggling with trouble, and struggling with demons, then you need to revalidate your membership. Because deliverance may mean different things to many people. It may mean different things to many people. So I ask you, what do you need deliverance from? Because to be delivered is to be set free. Free from sin, free from guilt, free from death, free from demons. Then to be delivered is to recover. To recover everything the enemy has stolen from you. To recover your glory, to recover your health, to recover your wealth, to recover your peace of mind, to recover your rights or your authority. To be delivered it's also to be informed and to be reformed. You need to be informed, you need to be reformed, and not to be deformed. To be delivered is to be inspired. When you don't, when you are not inspired, you become inspired. You, you definitely get inspired. That is the work of deliverance. We all need deliverance. Then you also need access. Psalm 24 verse 7 says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates. To be delivered is to have access. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. To be delivered means access. May the Lord give you and I access in Jesus' name. May we not be stranded in the name of Jesus. If something belongs to you and you don't have the keys to that place, you need deliverance in Jesus' name. I told us of one story of a young lady who went on the three days prayers and at the end of the prayers, she had a real revelation. And in that revelation, she was shouting and telling somebody, give me the key to my oil company. Give me the key to my oil company. As they went to bring the key, some giants came to distract her, and she eventually did not collect the key. The wealth in the oil company cannot locate you if you don't have the key. So to receive deliverance is to have access. I pray that we will all be delivered tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. And I will have access in the realm of the spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Because the access in the realm of the spirit gives birth to access in the physical. So it is only deliverance from demons that people spend so much time on. Yet, it ought not to be so. It is step by step. If you are sincere, Bible says if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. So deliverance can come, but you also have a part to play. Why do we usually get deliverance from sin when Jesus Christ has paid the price? It is because you still have that Adamic nature in you. That Adamic nature, you need to prune it, you need to work on it, you need to use the blood of Jesus constantly on it. Because righteousness is a work in progress. It is not a badge you attain in one day. You need to firmly make up your mind to follow God and stop committing sin and ask God to help you. Then alone can you be free from sin. And anytime you find out that you have committed one sin or the other, go to God, cry to Him and ask Him for forgiveness and make up your mind not to go that way anymore. You need to understand that we all need deliverance. We need to be delivered from our flesh. We need to be delivered from lust. We need to be delivered from pride. And the Almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. When you get your deliverance from demon, it means that you are removing the influences of demonic powers from your body, from your flesh and you are aligning your thoughts with the will of God. And until your flesh is free, until you are free from pollution, 
until you are free from all those sexual activities and they pollute you with food in the dream until you are free. Only then can your deliverance be complete. And the door, the key to keeping your deliverance is to make sure you live an holy life. When you are holy, you will get your possession. Obadiah 117 defines it. Deliverance, holiness, restoration. Deliverance, holiness, possession. So if you have not been restored all this while, child of God, ask yourself, am I holy? Your God has delivered you, you are safe. But are you walking towards holiness or you are taking the things of God with levity? I want us to pray tonight. I want you to talk to your maker. I want you to talk to your father. By 11.30, we'll be free and we'll be true. And those who want to wait behind for prophecy, God will give us a trance in Jesus' name. It is not compulsory you wait. But if you want to wait, it's fine. So what I'm trying to tell us is this. That we all need to be delivered. Only then can we enjoy the goodies in Mount Zion. In Luke chapter 10 verse 18. Jesus Christ told them that I be set Satan fall like a lightning from heaven. And he says, I give unto you powers to tread upon serpents and scorpions. What he's trying to tell us is that this battle that we are fighting, he has already won it for us. He's telling us that victory already belongs to us. That's why he said in Luke 10, 18, that he be set and fall like a lightning. And 19 says he's giving us powers to tread upon serpents and scorpions. So why don't you use your power? Why don't you go to God? Why, for, why don't you forget the lewdness in Egypt? According to Ezekiel 23, verse 27. Why don't you say bye-bye to Egypt? Until you say bye-bye to Egypt, that is only when Mark 16, 17 can work for you. Say, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak in new tongues. Child of God, the ball is in your court. As you pray tonight, as you pray tonight, I need you to rededicate your life to God. And if you are hearing me, you have not given your life to Jesus Christ. It's an opportunity for you. Because Zion is for those that are saved. Zion is for the children of God. Zion is not for those who don't know what they want in Christ Jesus. God has promised us a lot of things. And that's why in Isaiah 53 verse 1 to 5, he said that when you look at him, you will not even like him. He looks ordinary. He looks like if they tell you that's the Savior coming, you will not be bothered. But it's that same man that can deliver you from trouble, deliver you from flesh, deliver you from demons. That same man that can deliver you from sin. No wonder Isaiah 53 verse 5 says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquity, you and I. And the chastisement of his peace was upon you. Why are you restless? Yes, you, that woman there that don't have peace. Why are you restless? When Christ has been chastised for your peace, when he has been wounded for you, why are you sick? Why are you entertaining lust? Why are you doubting the word of God? God is saying to you today, listen to me, take me as they have said, take the word, believe it, and add faith to it. And then you will experience freedom in the mighty name of Jesus. You will experience freedom in the mighty name of Jesus. So I want us to begin to pray. I want us to begin to tell the Lord, Bible says, in righteousness will I be established. Isaiah 54, verse 14. It says, oppression shall be far from me. I shall not fear of the terror, because it will not come near me. 
Isaiah 54, verse 14. So I need you to talk to God. No fear, no sorrow. No fear, no sorrow. I'm a child of God. Because he said in Isaiah 28, verse 18, he says, your covenant with death is disannulled, and your agreement with hell will not stand. So if you are in Mount Zion, there shall be no death. Second Corinthians 1.10 says that God has delivered you from death because we trust in him. If you put your trust in God, if you wait on the Lord, those that wait on the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. You will not be weary in the mighty name of Jesus. For those of us who are giving our life to Jesus Christ, I want us to bow down our heads and pray. Father, I bring these brothers, this sister before you. I ask, O oh God, that you save them. Deliver them and accept them. Because your word says if anyone come unto you, you will in no wise cast out. Father, I thank you because you will not cast anyone out. Accept every one of us who comes to you now. Forgive us our sins and take us to Zion. In the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, O oh God. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen.